processors, and personal computers. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you Ken Olson, the president of digital. And it is my personal honor and my privilege to introduce to you the President of the United States, the leader of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. And I understand that you even have time in here to do a little artwork that, up there. Well, I'm, I'm very proud and, and pleased to be here. And when, when you said about the most powerful nation on earth, I think we're standing in the midst of part of the reason why it is. What a typically American story this is. Mr. Olson and two associates 25 years ago started with an idea that now is this company, I can't remember, it was only a few employees that you started with, and it's now 65,000 in all in all of the various plants of this, of this company. I know that today, and you probably were too busy last night to look at television, but I was talking a little bit on it. And uh, I was talking about the unemployed that besets our country. But this, this is the future, and you're part of it. This is where we're going. But now they've told me, and they've warned me in advance that I only have a couple of minutes, and then I have to move on to some other things that I'm doing while I'm here. But it, I just thought, and I probably can't take more than one or two, that there must have been times when you said, if I had a chance, I'd like to ask that guy, uh, meaning me, uh, well, if, there's, if you did think about it and you've got one, fire away and I'll try to answer it. Yes. What? What is the? I wish you'd asked an easier question. <laughs> what is the possibility of making Martin Luther King's birthday a national holiday? I believe that it is a day that should be nationally recognized. But technically, when you say national holiday. You were then speaking of a day that closes down industry and the government closes down and so forth. And the only one we've really ever done that for nationally uh, of our own country was George Washington. Even Lincoln's birthday, some states recognize it more specially than others, but it is not that other. And I know what has caused the problems in the Congress and in legislation with regard to that is what could be done that would not at the same time necessitate that being the kind of holiday where, as I say, that is only recognized in one other man, George Washington, and then you would have to ask, well, now, wait a minute, uh, great is the service he performed, uh, have we opened the door to, to many other people, uh, Thomas Jefferson, for example, or uh, George Washington Carver and the great contribution he made, but I would like to I'd like to sit down with people that are trying and are uh, doing this drive to find if we can't have a kind of national recognition day that will be an annual observance of the birthday of this man. Because just a few days ago on his birthday, I was talking about him. And I made the statement then that Lincoln freed the black man. Martin Luther King freed the white man. And we didn't know until he did that how heavy the burden of racism was that we had been bearing for all those years. And thank God for what he has done 
and he should be remembered. I'm, I'm, I, we're, we're all having trouble. I've got the mic and you haven't got a mic. She wants to applaud for all people working together of color and gender. Oh. I That's when I said earlier that we were standing in the middle of, of what has made America great. That's part of it. We came from every corner of the world. Came here because our ancestors, some of us came directly and then some of us by way of our ancestors. But the one common characteristic we have and we've proven to all the world with all their prejudices and their jealousies and their bickerings that go on between ethnic groups and between racial and religious groups here in this country yes we've got our faults and our problems but we've made it work better than it has ever worked any place in the world and we're I think the common heritage of all of us is that somebody in our family or ourselves if we're the first to come here had a little ounce of courage and a love of freedom that made us tear up the roots in the homeland and come here to this place where we could truly be free. Yeah. He says, he says, says I can only take one more question and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to hear that far back. What am I going to do about the arms race? Well, we're going to keep on trying to talk the Russians into meeting us on that. I proposed last November, or a year ago November, I proposed to begin with, the Soviet Union has more than, what about 340 intermediate range nuclear missiles aimed in Europe. That's why they're called intermediate range and they're targeted on all of Europe. And there is nothing there as a deterrent that could fire back in other words, to keep them from firing in the first place. And the NATO countries asked us some time ago if we would provide Pershing and cruise missiles in enough number to be based in Western Europe as a deterrent to those weapons. And I proposed a year ago last November that we sit down with the Russians and see if we couldn't negotiate a zero option that they give up all of theirs and we won't put any in in Western Europe and free that whole area of the world from that threat that is hanging over it. Now so far, uh, they've, only, they've only met us halfway. They're willing for us to have zero. They want to keep on having missiles. Uh, we're going to keep on negotiating. But in addition to that, we have a team in Geneva now that is negotiating also a reduction of the great intercontinental ballistic missiles that the Soviets have aimed at us and that we have aimed at them. And we've asked them to join us in cutting way back to below the level we now have, which is much less than they have, and having us have an equal number and have it be verifiable so that we'll know whether each other is cheating or not and we're continuing with that, but at the same time, we have a third team that is negotiating with them to see if they won't join us in reducing what are called conventional arms, just artillery, tanks, things of that kind. Now, we're going to keep on doing that for just as long as we can keep them at a table because the goal has to be peace. And yet, the only answer to the threat they pose is a deterrent. That, in other words, we have to be strong enough that until they will join us in disarmament, they've got to know that 
if they decided to loose those weapons on us, uh, they'd suffer enough damage themselves that it wouldn't be worthwhile. That's the only protection we have against that kind of weapon. And as I say, we are the ones who have made those proposals. I think they came to the negotiating table because of our present military buildup. The fact that we showed them or told them, unless they did join us in disarming, then they were going to have to face the fact that we were going to build our armaments up to the point that we could protect the freedom and the people of this country and of the free world. And once we made that plain, they were willing to come and sit down at the negotiating table. And I hope they'll meet us in good faith and join us because this would be the contribution that this generation of Americans could make to the world that would be remembered for all time to come if the great nations would begin turning their swords into plowshares. So just keep a prayer in your heart for us. We're going to try to do it. All right. They tell me I got to quit. Thank you, Mr. President. We feel proud to have you here today. We have a DeckMate computer, which we feel is the most sophisticated standalone word processor, which we'd like to, if we can figure out how, give to the White House for the use of Jim Brady. And we will be careful to be sure that it has the keyboard that was assembled by the President of the United States. So it will be the most famous word processor in the world. We feel oh, proud to have you here today. <laughs> University. <laughs> In addition, Dee has been a driving force within the so splendidly in Massachusetts. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce our terms like private sector initiative, free enterprise, and we might even have some good news. Tools they require to capitalize on the biological revolution this country and the world is going in. Taxes and education. Let me first turn the job. Four years, we created 61,700 jobs in these difficult times. If we could go to the second chart, it shows that the total tax burden has dropped very significantly. When we look at the yellow second, and we are dropping. The property tax, Alaska was higher, and we have dropped the 12. Massachusetts today Mr. <coughs> has the lowest unemployment rate of our 17 industrial states. For the last 38 consecutive months, we have been established the social contract. The past five years, we've had a major effort in education to ensure that we can grow human resources. Approximately one is being produced. We have written curriculum guides for universities in the technological field. One year ago, and we called it the 2% solution, 
where again, through our own initiatives, we pledged that we would contribute 2% of our research and development expenditures to universities in the Commonwealth. We would essentially use funds, equipment, as well as support sponsored research. Our estimate was that this program would contribute $15 million to Massachusetts University. Thanks in part to the equipment donation, tax deduction, and the 81 Recovery Act put forth by your administration, we have now believed that our estimate is closer to $40 million in just 12 months going to higher education from 130 companies in the High Technology Council. I uh, certainly would be uh, delighted to hear your comments on the response process and questions you might have.
we want very much to see that happen. We also, we decided to hold the job to be a one day enterprise. I recently went through the one day as in the Los Angeles Times on Sunday when I was out there on my last trip for the New York holiday. And I was amazed at the, in the 45 and a half pages of help wanted ads, that how many of those ads were from companies like your own, my technology. And they weren't just advertising they had an opening for someone. They were begging for people to come in. They were also inducing, please come to our job. Stockholders in which they 